Today, a judge was to decide where a convicted serial violent predator would live. The so-called pillowcase had previously been released to live in the Antelope Valley. But Christopher Hubbard was taken back into custody just a couple of years later. Eyewitness News reporter Leo Stallworth has the details and reaction from residents who don't want him in their community. It was a quick hearing here at the Hollywood Courthouse, and in the end, the judge postponed making a decision on where he will house the man dubbed the pillowcase rapist, Christopher Hubbard. In 2014, despite protests from many residents in the high desert, a judge releasing Christopher Hubbard, known as the pillowcase and housing him in the Antelope Valley community of Lake Los Angeles, which is east of Sun Village. Two years later, Hubbard was taken back into custody for violating the terms of his release. Prosecutors say he failed five lie detector tests. Hubbard assaulted at least 40 women in the 1970s and 80s. In 2021, the Department of State Hospitals recommended he was suitable to be conditionally released, which cleared the path for his pending release this month. The Department of State Hospitals did not explain why Hubbard was deemed suitable to be released, citing patient privacy laws. Several Antelope Valley or AV residents attending the hearing terrified that the judge will settle on moving Hubbard back into the AV. His release to the Antelope Valley has been opposed by L.A. County District Attorney George Gascon and Supervisor Catherine Barger, among others. What brings you to tears? Because it's terrifying. It's scary. Diane Swick says she's learned if the judge decides to move Hubbard to the AV, he would be living roughly a block from her home. I live 300 feet away. I can see the house. You know, what are the stipulations are going to be? How far can he go off the property? Because as soon as he crosses mine, there's going to be a phone call made. Hubbard's release includes wearing a GPS ankle bracelet, continuing treatment, facing random searches, and much more. Residents we talked to say they're fed up with the AV being treated like a dumping ground for violent <laughs> predators. <laughs> Spinning my drink. Why did you? This is for my son, my two-year-old son. Yeah. Why would you spin my drink? So sorry, why? why? I want to know why you did it. I don't know. For what? We tipped you. What's the problem? No problem. Sir. My kids are my car. Uh-huh. Your kids are in your car, so you spit in my drink for my kids, right? Should I come spin your kids' water then, bottle? Then, sir, I, uh, bring another two. Should I spit in your kids' water bottle? So sorry, sir. Then. Uh, so I'm so sorry. So should my son drink this or you should drink it? You drink it right now. You drink it, take that seal off, and you're going to drink your spit. Okay, give me my drink. I want you to drink that right now. Okay? Drink it. Drink it. I'm Muslim, so You don't drink what? Fruit juice? Or you don't drink your own spit? So drink it. No, drink it now. You spit in my drink, right? So drink it. That's your spit in there. You broke the seal. Oh, no. Yeah, you broke the seal. I have it on camera. You broke the seal and you spit my drink, right? I have it on camera. My car records. My, my phone records. Everything records. Don't act like you didn't do it. I have you on camera. Okay, sir. I'm so sorry. Drink your spit. So sorry, sir. Okay? Shame on you. Shame on you. So sorry again. Yeah, so sorry for spitting my drink. Good for your kids. And your kids don't have seatbelts on. They should be in car seats. Why do your kids not have seatbelts on? I just come nearby, so... You just live nearby? They should have seatbelts on. Why do your kids not have car seats? Okay? Don't spit in my kid's drink. You never come to my house again, you understand? Okay, okay. Don't ever come to my house again. He's walking. Huh? That's so walking. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Wait. You wait. Yeah, you wait. Wait right there. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, pull him over. Hey George, relax. I saw you put them in your bag. No, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll dump my. You don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah. 
telling you, I'm telling you, I thought I saw you put them on your back. And you didn't. Okay. So you just stereotyped me. No, I did not. I promise you that. Because you didn't see sh Okay. I saw you walk over with it and it was in your hands and you put them in your bag. Didn't. Okay. I didn't. Then fine. Just show me. Show I'm me. I'm not going to show you my cameras. You can't. That you recorded. Uh, you you, you, you want to show me. So you can. So show me that I took something. I saw you put it in your bag. I'm sorry if you didn't, but I'm telling you, I swear. I saw that, you, you can bag, then. Because I, I, I want not. you to be able to do your job. Okay. So let's let's see this. No, it's okay if you did. No, no, I'm, I'm so serious. Did. I swear I saw you did. I'm sorry if you did. If I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry you didn't. Look, look, look. Nothing in this bag. I bought all this shit. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought I saw you put something that was ours in your bag. Did it. I apologize. Don't ever come up to me like that okay. again. I will not. Do you want me to help you pick up your no. stuff? No. Okay, there is one to you. I don't give a Now everybody is seeing what I have seen for the last couple years. So let me just say, I've never heard of uh, this pillow villain before. Never heard of this guy. Um, this is ridiculous. And they're going to let this, after all of the things that he did, when the time that he was out, they're going to let him go free after serving time. And they feel that he's safe and that he's not going to potentially do this again. Like, people got to remember, this man was more than likely caught what back in the 80s, early 90s. It is now 2024. His mind is still stuck back in that time. Whenever he got locked up, that's those are his last memories. That's where he is as a person. He's not going to know how to operate here. This man is going to uh, go right back into what he was initially doing. He's going to go out here. He's going to see these different people. He's going to see these families. He's going to look at everything that's going on. Yes, it's over. He is going to relapse and do the exact same thing. He didn't learn no type of lessons. And they didn't make sure that he learned a lesson of not to sit up there and do this again or, or whatever it is supposed to be when they say that jail and prisons are meant for rehabilitation. They don't rehabilitize, which is not a word. They, they, they don't do any of that when it deals with any of these criminals directly up here. They don't. And I know somebody in the comment section is going to say rehabilitize is not a word. I know that. I just made it up on the spot because it is what it is. But. Yeah, it's like, you know, this is this is crazy. But people all the time want to talk about things that go on in the black community, but never want to speak on things like this that happen all the time across the United States, where they let out people that look just like him all the time. They put them into neighborhoods where kids are located, where high schools are located, where nurseries are located, where families are located, and they just let them just be there. And expect for them not to do anything crazy for the second story. Let me just tell you this. Um, that father has the utmost restraint because let me say this and you are not going to hear me say this very often. There's a lot of times that I sit up and tell people that you should not take the law into your own hands, right? You shouldn't take justice into your own hands. You just shouldn't do it. Um, but there's times like this where it's like, I understand. I see your point. I'm not going to judge you. You mean to tell me? That this guy, obviously you can tell that he is not from the United States. He decided that he wanted to be a delivery driver. And also, I want to note, this man also is a father. He has two kids in the back seat, which don't have a seatbelt on. But again, it's going to add into the story. So he wants to be a delivery driver. He's delivering the food for a father and his child. And this dude opens up the drink, which is taped shut, in order to... Put things directly in it and then close it back up. And then once he's confronted with it, he says, no, no, no. The father shows him the drink. He's like, no, it's, you know, it's not open. I didn't open it. Yes, you did. It's on camera. It's on camera somewhere. I, I forgot where it is on one of my hard drives. I have the original video where you can clearly see the, the guy doing this on the ring doorbell uh, camera. I am so happy that this father that this father had this on film and that he caught this on time. Oh, yo, I'm not even, I'm not even a part of that family. The amount of anger that I had when I saw the video on how the dude walked out the car, took a brief second to do that to that towel's drink, 
seal it back up and then try to deliver it as if nothing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my, that is, that is so, so disgusting. That is so, do you understand the type of human being that you have to be doing something like that? And the only thing that took place was that he was fined $500. Dude, I want him in prison. I want those kids taken away. I want him to be on some type of registry. I don't care what it is. I want him to be on some type of registry for the rest of his life. The moment in time, it's already bad enough when you want to mess with people's food. I'm talking about grown adults. It's already bad enough. But you opt to do this to a child, a child that didn't do nothing, that don't know nothing about nothing. And like I said, if it goes to a point where that kid finds out later on that this is what this dude did, if he decides in his mind, like, yo, I don't like people like this, hey, it'd be like that. It'd be like that. Again, I'm not trying to justify a lot of stuff directly out here, but I'm saying this is crazy. This is crazy. This is so crazy. Why would you? Why? Why would you decide to do that? Why? Why? Like I said, I you know, I, I don't even have... Man, like I said, uh, there are other fathers out here that would have dealt with this situation. Something vicious. I'm one of those people. You don't do that. You can, you can sit up there and potentially do whatever to my food. That's cool. You don't do that to a child. You don't do that to a child. You, you do not. There are certain lines out here that you just do not cross. And I feel like people have, you know, lost that or, or, or don't understand what that means anymore. And I feel like a lot of people need to be taught what that means. That's crazy. for the last story which is a classic this is just profiling at its finest she did it because she's black she wanted to say oh no never that i, I can i can be 100 no you got caught it's okay just admit that you have you know certain prejudices that more than likely inside of you you're also racist and that you judged her because of the color of her skin instead of looking at somebody that looks just like you who nine times out of ten is actually in the store stealing like i said i didn't see people that look just like that karen inside of a bath and body works in groups and they're sitting up there just stealing while they're, you know, spraying out all this, they're sneaking and putting some of those samples or whatnot or whatever directly in their purse, whatever carry on, whatever they got, whatever women normally carry, that's, that's how they're, you know, doing those things. They're lifting those things. And again, nine times out of 10, those are the women that are in those stores shoplifting, but everybody wants to look at black people. And you literally had the black woman. She dumped everything out. And she's like, okay, so where's the t-shirt that I stole? Where is it at? She was like, well, I, uh, I saw, I, I know I just, just admit that you're wrong. Why is it so hard for white people to just admit that they're wrong? Why is that so difficult? You're wrong. You were incorrect. You thought something and you were incorrect. And then on top of that, you tried to double down on it. You was like, well, I saw you put it and you had it in your hand. And then you decided to put it directly in the back. Ma'am, no, you didn't. You thought something because in your imagination, that's the most dangerous place for a black person to even exist in your mind, because magically you'll just come up with every and anything and say that, yeah, black person did it. Like, this is exactly how historically black cities and towns have been burnt down to never exist, to be erased directly from history. This is exactly how black towns and cities have been turned into lakes and ponds turned directly into strip malls. This is how a lot of our grave sites were basically just, you know, excavated, rolled over and just repaved and made into something else. And now they're just now finding out, oh, this is a grave site for black people. You think? This is how a lot of young black boys and men lost their lives because women like her still continue to lie to this date. Crazy. Crazy work. And then you'll still have people up here be like, oh, well, yeah, she, she, she was wrong, but that doesn't mean that black people don't step. What are you even talking about right now? What are you even talking about right now? On average, the greater majority, the Caucasians, still way more than black people. You guys own the stores, work in the stores, patronize the stores. 
So, of course, y'all going to be the main ones to sit up there and steal directly from the stores. But, oh, no, we're going to sit up there and pay attention to black people because they're the ones overwhelmingly stealing from every single store across the United States, which is pretty much impossible because in a lot of areas, you got 0.1% of black people that even exist there. But like I said, I guess that doesn't matter.